Hello there and welcome to today's video. Hopefully we are straight. I've been trying to finagle this camera into place. Um, hopefully we're straight. Hopefully it's looking okay. Anyways, we're here for the video that I promised you um, in my last sit down and talk with me about eBay reselling video, I guess we're gonna call it. Um, that video, I mean, for my channel is kind of currently going crazy. I have over 1500 views on it and I've gotten so many of you that are new subscribers. So welcome to the family. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to our community of thrifting and vintage lovers who really just want to see these pieces rehomed and reloved. Um, that is what this channel is about. So I'm so happy to add to our family, um, to add to our community and to add to our knowledge because we're all about learning over here and learning from each other and our experiences and the business and the pieces that we sell and the pieces that we find and discover together. So I'm so, so excited to be bringing you this video because like I said in my last video, these are the videos that helped me when I was starting out. Um, in the beginning, I felt like wow these people are at a level that they can start making these videos start you know talking about what works for them and i want to be there one day and i feel like i'm not like where i want to be goal wise but i'm definitely at a place where i've had enough experience over the past four years to really give you the tips and tricks that are like the the end all be all like this is the bare minimum of what you need to do to have a successful ebay storefront um of course there are things that work for some people and stuff that don't but these are my tried and true um tips and tricks that i have gathered from other people things that i've tried for myself and things that are just really working for me so i would love to share um that with you today so i have my little sheet of notes um i can't remember if my paper was white or yellow last time but today it's green so i just find scrap pieces of paper all over and so i can have my thoughts concise and i'm not talking for two hours on this video so you'll see me looking down a lot and that's what i'm doing so title of this video keep your ebay listings at the top how to keep your ebay listings at the top um everything that we do these days on the internet through social media with emails um so a big part of my job at my church uh is communications a uh, newsletter weekly newsletter and so a big thing in communication that carries on through social media through anything that you do business wise online um not just necessarily reselling, but just business in general with marketing and all that. Um, algorithms are something that no matter how hard you try to ignore is a huge part of understanding your business and understanding how you can take the next step in your business. If you don't understand the algorithms, if you don't understand um, what's going to push your content to the top, what's gonna push your lim listing to the top, I'm not gonna say you can't make it, but it'll definitely be harder for you. And why not ride the wave that's there for you to ride to make your life a little bit easier? Because this commissioned reselling, your business, your time, your, discipline it's not easy it's not easy to um it's not easy to have a business that you're running in general so why not find ways to make your life easier and to me it's really riding that wave of algorithms that are already out there this is how the system works again those tried and true methods where you can just push your content out push your listings out at the time where they will get recognized because at the end of the day we do this for sales okay so i'm gonna that's a long intro but here we go so i want to talk about listings today um and this is just algorithms based on ebay of course we have algorithms based on youtube algorithms based on tiktok based on instagram facebook all this stuff 
but today we're going to talk about algorithms for eBay and these are these are things that if you were to do a crash course from the horse's mouth from eBay these are the things that they're going to tell you your listing has to have for the system to recognize them as a check this is a good listing they don't have people that are going through and checking each and every listing so they set up a system on the back end which is the algorithm to scan your listing and if the 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 more your listings can check 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 as the system is scanning the more your listing is going to bump up and up and up by the system okay so that's what an algorithm is that's what an ebay algorithm is doing and so that is something that you have to understand um, in order for you to maximize what your listings are looking like so number one this is across the board everybody knows this white background ebay wants a white background if you were to look up the basics of how to list on ebay they literally have this on their training tips on how to list on ebay to take your pictures on a white background they don't say solid background they don't say just make sure it's clear just make sure you don't have anything in the background they literally say white background we know that this is not ideal for all kinds of listings and we know that this is not ideal for all niches of resellers of or of reselling so what we found to be a roundabout of this rule of it needs to be a, a white background and the reason why i say it doesn't work like for example if i have a clear piece of glass I mean, I can make it look like something on a white background, but if I have a colored background, it looks, it's popping and you can really see the details. If I have a white piece of pottery, again, I can make it work if I absolutely had to, but it's popping on my black background. So there are some items that will just at the end of the day not work on a white background, even though the system wants you to have a white background. So here are the roundabout ways to still follow that rule without it being literal number one make sure you have a solid background no clutter in the background no books or bookcases like what i have this is too much for the system to decipher what you are selling um so make sure it's a solid background if it's a solid color, if it's a solid board, if it's a solid sheet, if it's a solid towel, if it's a solid pillow, just make sure it's a solid background. Um, this next step down, I would say it's next step down because top, top tier, you, you have white background. Next tier down, which is what most, if not all resellers do, is just solid background just whatever color it is just as long as it's solid the next step down from that and it does work if you have a really large following or people know that they're gonna search for your ebay store or you have certain followers that are waiting for you to post you can get away with now getting into the aesthetic backgrounds but it has to be a continuous pattern what do i mean by that um, there is a reseller here on YouTube, um, Harry Tornado. He refuses to do, not refuses, but for him, he just, his thing is a wood. I think he got it from Amazon. It's just like a, a backdrop, like a picture backdrop and it's wood. Like it, it's, it's essentially vinyl. Um, it's just a vinyl backdrop, but it's wood like the, but it's a continuous, it, it's a continuous pattern. It's not like flowers or um, something crazy like tie-dye or camo. It's a continuous, settle, subtle um, background. You can do that. Some people I know do um, solid color. Again, you're not going to get this. So they do solid color like brick. Like they want that aesthetic brick looking with their pottery or with their handcrafted items, whatever they do. Um, so but again it needs to be a solid color or a continuous pattern so those are really the 
only three options that you have, but you have to just decipher whether or not you're willing to take the risk the lower down the tier that you uh, that you go, okay? So that's backgrounds. Um, time and day. This is not as big of a deal on eBay as it is um, for say social media or if you're pushing out an email or you want somebody to click on something. Um, but I've, I did this research way, way in the back, way, way in the beginning of my, um, eBay reselling career. Um, and they said, and this was based on Easter standard time. So we're Easter standard time. And the article that I was reading was also Easter standard time and their sweet spot of what they were saying was 9 PM to 1 AM Eastern standard time is the sweet spot to list. Um, again, I feel like days are not that important, like as important, but I can tell you from my experience, 11 to 1 a.m. has been my sweet spot. If I list an item between 10 and 11, and this is not across the board, I'm just saying what I've noticed, if an item goes up 10 to 1 p.m., 1 a.m., Either I'm, I'm having inquiries about it by the morning, I'm having um, watchers on it by the morning, or it's already sold by the morning. Um, versus me throwing out items during the day, those items I'm com I can confidently say 95% of the time, if you're not getting clicks on them in the first 48 hours, they're getting lost in the, um, the sea of listings if you're listing during the day. That's what I've seen. It could be total coincidence, but like I said, over the past four years, I have tried different things. And it's just, it's always that on the, like it's always very obvious that when I list, sir, and it's also certain items because my niche is so specific, I can't really just say that this is it. Um, this is just based on what I've observed personally in my store and also what the article was saying. Um, and then also the top selling days for me are Thursday and Friday. Those are my top selling days. The first half of the week and then, and then surprisingly the lowest amount of sales for me are on the weekends. I know a lot of people, the weekends are like booming for them. I, I hardly ever sell anything on the weekend. I'm usually like 85% of the time. I'm selling Thursday and Friday and either I have to make sure I get it out on Friday or if something sells on Friday, depending on what's happening during that day, I have to send them a message and say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna have to send your package out Monday morning. So that's the majority of my sales of Thursday and Friday. Weekends are very slow for me. Again, I know that's not the case for everybody. Um, and then during the week usually just varies. But if I had to compare during the week to weekends, I would say even during the week is higher than on the weekends. I feel like people are out and about on the weekends. There's not a lot of downtime. There's no routine. So there's not as much routine. Like during the week you have your routine, you have, you know, your relaxing time where you just want to pull out your phone to get away from the mundane of schedule and that's when people are scrolling and really doing their shopping and then on the weekend it's like really activities and people are not in front of their phones as much i don't know that's my theory but again i'm not saying that this this point in particular i, I even didn't want to put it in here but i feel like it should have an honorary mention just something for you to try um definitely those late evenings eastern standard time and then um those last few days Wednesday, Thursday, Friday before the weekend um, is really when I get in a lot of those sales. Um, I feel like this video is going to be forever long. So I was going to dissect what you should actually do in a listing. I think I'm going to leave that for another video in and of itself. Um, right now, just for as far as posting listings um algorithm wise i want to skip to my final point which is consistency so i will do another video just diving into the different um 
categories of listings, title, shipping, how to improve your listings, how to promote your eBay store. Um, and I mean like get a promotion, not using the promote the promotion um, feature on there because there is a difference. So all of that could be part of a whole nother video that I can talk about. So for sure, I will do that video in another, or I'll do that talk in another video and then maybe I'll be able to show you guys a little bit more on an actual um, screen. Um, but for the last point I feel which is very important that I've personally learned um, the hard way several times is consistency. So the algorithm, I think this is probably one of the most important if not as important as the white background <laughs> thing. Like it's like, so this is how the algorithm works. They wanna see an active listing, an active seller, an active seller. They wanna see an active account. There we go. They wanna see an active account. The algorithm doesn't know that you have carpool on Tuesday, Wednesday, and you can't list that day. The, car, the, the algorithm is just seeing that you are posting Mondays, some weekends, and then not for two weeks. That's what the algorithm is seeing. The algorithm is seeing that it's so sporadic. So in, an, in other words, as an investment for the algorithm to bump you up to the top, you are not a good investment because your listings are so sporadic. If you are a very active account, you, you're making sales. Because if you're listing, your items are up there and you're selling. So now you've become an account that is a good investment for the algorithm to push up to the top, okay? Um, because this person is going to make the sales with their consistent listing. So we want those sales as a business, as a company. So the algorithm is gonna push that account up to the top. Um, so more listings. So the algorithm wants you to see, would rather see you list one item every single day than 50 items on one day and then not for two months. Okay, like that's the kind of consistency that we're talking about. Don't bite, bite off more than you can chew and do what you can do. I'm going to address the issue of, okay, well, I have tons of inventory. I'm not looking to buy. I have tons of inventory. I've been through my death pile. I've been through everything that is just hanging out. I literally don't have anything else to list, but I either financially, spatially, physically cannot go out and buy more inventory. I'm gonna address that point. Um, but let's just get through just basic standard algorithm stuff. Um, so consistency is key. I would rather, again, algorithm would rather see an account that's active every single day, minimally active every single day, than very active one day and then not for a month, okay? So keep that in mind. Frequency of listings, algorithm is pushing your stuff up, so you're going to have more sales. When you have those sales, don't just package the item and send them on their way and that's it. Take advantage of getting, of building your customer base because the more you build your customer base, the more you're showing the algorithm, okay, not only is this account active, not only is this account selling, but we're getting tons of good feedback from this account. We're getting 100% feedback. We're getting that people are happy with these items. We're getting repeat customers. We're getting people that are following this account so they're invested in coming back to our app. They're invested in coming back to this account. So now you're building your customer base. I'm going to I'm going to talk about this very quickly and then I will probably reiterate it in the in the listings um uh video. This is my system. As soon as I get a sale, I 
send in, I send a, a message regardless of, I mean, I, I'm gonna, I wanna say 10 out of 10 times. Like I have people that respond back, but 10 out of 10 times, I have no back communication from the customer. Um, I take initiative. Thank, this is literally what I say in every single message that I send as soon as I get a sale. Thank you so much for your purchase. If it was an offer and I accepted the offer, which that's another thing, I am very, I am all about accepting offers. I buy low enough that my margins are high enough that I have plenty of cushion that if somebody buys, sends me an offer, I'm, I am here to move inventory along. I am not here to hoard inventory. Yes, we know what things cost. Yes, we know what things are valued at. You have, yes, I know there are fees. Yes, I know you're not gonna get the whole amount. These people are there to buy a treasure that they love, that they had a memory with, that they've been looking for. They have to pay shipping, whatever it is. If you're in a business to keep things moving, accept offers, just accept offers, okay? And these people that have the idea of they don't wanna mess with offers, that's perfectly fine. I'm open to offers all the time. Um, and and I've gotten to a point in my business where I don't decline an offer. I might counter every once in a while, but for the most part, I'm accepting offers. Um, so, sorry, going back to my prompt. Thank you for your purchase or thank you for your offer and your purchase. I want them to know that I am appreciative that they reached out to send me an offer. Thank you for your offer and purchase. Um, I will ship out today. I will ship out tomorrow. I will ship out after the weekend. I will ship out after the holidays. I will try to ship out today. If I can't make it, I will ship out tomorrow. I will try to ship out tomorrow, but if I can't get to it tomorrow, it will for sure be this day. So I let them know when I'm shipping out. Then, please don't forget to leave me a review when you receive your blank. Don't say item because now that makes it very obvious that you're copying and pasting this prompt to everybody. You putting in the item that they have purchased lets them know that you know them personally, you know their order, you know what they're getting. That makes it personal. So thank you for your, uh, your order, thank you for your purchase. Um, I will be shipping out blank so that that's just open communication. Please don't forget to leave me a review when you receive your blank, your specific item. Thanks again. Or if it's the holidays, Merry Christmas, have a happy new year, have a great long weekend, whatever it is, okay? 10 out of 10 times, like I can't even say nine out of 10 times, like 9.8 times out of 10, I'm not gonna get a response. The other, the other, the other point two times, thank you so much. I appreciate the communication. Um, I've gotten, wow, I've never had somebody communicate that thoroughly with me. Um, I've had, uh, thank you so much. I've had, um, I've had, thanks for the update. You know, like you'll get, I, I, sometimes I'll say I'm sick, um, I'm sick, I, I, I'll try my best to get it out tomorrow. If not, it will be Monday, so sorry for the delay. I'll get back. I'm in no hurry, take your time, feel better. You know, like you'll get those, the more you're personable in your message, the more people are inclined to answer back. And that's usually what um, I've seen with those messages. So that's with every single order. I do that with every single order. I'm sending that message out. Um, now they know the line of communication is open. Now you're there to help them with whatever they need. Um, actually, I should probably get a pen and start writing these ideas down. So I need to make a, a I need to make a video for listings, like an updated one, a specific listing, which I said that in my last video, and then also. I mean, I can go into a whole video of just customer service and the issues that I've had with customer service, um, the issues that I've had with USPS and how I fix those issues. The reason why I love eBay when it comes to customer service, we can get into that, that's a whole thing. But 
this this is how you build your customer service i would say confidently seven out of ten no let's be a little bit more conservative i would say uh, 6.5 because I can't say 7, 7 is too high I can't say 6 because that's too close to 50% and it's definitely more than 50% so let's just say 6.5 out of 10 do leave me the review and that is so important for algorithm that is so important and and I and I I let them know please let, leave me a review it really helps out my business or it really helps out my eBay store it really helps with algorithms to have those positive reviews. So ask for them. Don't be afraid to ask people for reviews. I mean, if you really want to go the extra step and if they haven't and, you know, it's been a while, your item has been delivered, you haven't seen anything, hey, just want to... Sometimes I don't want to open that can of worms because it's like, okay, I, the package made it. I'm not really going to reach out. Um, or, you know, I don't really have the brain capacity to continue that far along, but really, I mean, you can, if you're really not desperate for it, but really just wanting to be extra, extra thorough, Hey, just, you know, want to make sure you got your package. Okay. You're enjoying it. Please don't forget to send me that review or whatever it is. Um, if you want to follow up extra, but if I don't hear from the, the buyer after delivery, I'm good. And I write it off and we're on to the next one. But um, feedback definitely, definitely helps um, a lot. Um, just some other things that I'm going to throw out to you that will help with algorithm, but I think will just apply to the listings, the more specific listing video. Um, consider um, accepting returns. That really changed my business. In the past four years, I've only had two returns. One of them was really ridiculous. <laughs> Let's just say that. Like, it was just really ridiculous. And one of them actually resulted in one of those issues, those customer service issues that I, that I want to talk to you guys about. But literally, in the four, past four years, I've only had two returns. Um, the returns as a buyer on eBay, not as a seller, as a buyer, just makes me feel more comfortable buying from that person. I've only returned in the past five years of buying on eBay one time. So I always, and, and the reason is, and again, I feel like this can be customer service. There are so many different ways that you can resolve an issue that doesn't involve the um, the send the buyer to send their item back. Like I've given discounts. I've depending on the item of the val the value of the item. Like and if it's an eight dollar item, you know what, buddy? I would rather have your hundred percent review. I will give you your eight dollars back. I don't really care. Don't send it back. I don't want to deal with it. I want to have your good review. Here is your money back. Just whatever. And 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 I've gotten good reviews like that. Like, um. So returns, I would put them on just for that peace of mind, just the peace of mind of your buyer. And really and truly, I can tell you that you really will not, you won't be dealing with that many returns. If you're doing your part, I mean, if you're sending items that are wrong, if you're not, if your listings are not up to par, if you're sending broken stuff and you didn't list that it was broke, I mean, if you're doing your job 100% on your end to disclose all information and these people know what they're getting, at the end of the day, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be worried about people returning your items. So I have returns um, offered just so it's that mind trick of like, peace of mind for the buyer and like i said if you have all your t's crossed and all your i's dotted you should have no problem um with worrying about people returning items right and left um another thing to consider um and this is all part of that promotion of your ebay store is um two things international shipping I don't understand these people that don't do international shipping. It's not any different than a, a domestic transaction. 
you don't even have the option to pay for international shipping. So I don't know if these people are like, I'm not gonna pay for international shipping. You don't have, you don't even have that option to pay for international shipping. When it comes to international shipping, that is 100% on the buyer. It's not, it's not on the seller at all for international shipping. Um, eBay has their own distribution center just for international shipping. So you're not even sending the package to the person in the final destination, in the final international destination. You are sending your package to one of the international distribution centers and then eBay takes it from there for you. So that's just an untapped market, an un a huge untapped market if you are not hitting that button that includes international sales. I have sold all over the world. My last package went to, well, I mean, I had a Puerto Rico package, but that's considered US soil. Um, Greece was my last international. I've had Israel. I had an Israeli pottery piece that went to an, an international Israeli museum in Israel. Um, I've sold tons of is Israeli vases and uh, pottery, the lapid um, Israeli vases and pictures to Israel. Um, so Greece and Israel, Canada is a big one. Um, I'm trying to think, United Kingdom is another big one. Korea and China also is another big one. Surprisingly, I've sent, I've sent to India before. Uh, Mexico is another one. Sorry, Mexico is not. I had a lady that lived in Mexico. She ordered her item and sent it to Texas to her friend and then picked it up on a trip. Um, so uh, Mexico is not one of the ones that, that you can send to, but I've sent to all over the world. Um, and to me, that's an untapped market if you are not um, including international. And I have gotten um, email prompts to include international listings. Uh, I mean, it's just a generic email that they send out across the board. They don't really know um, whether or not, like it's just coming like automated. Um, but I have international listings activated on my account so that it's just automatic. Whenever I put a listing in for it to be automatic, just um, international included. Um, so I could definitely go into that. It's They actually switched it to something for it to be like a whole program. It's called the Global global shipping program um, on eBay. That's what it's called now. It's not no longer called international program. Um, but anyways, you could research all of this on the eBay website or on the eBay um, homepage on your login on a browser, not they do have some um, on the app, but you can get the full spectrum of like Q and A questions, free, frequently asked questions um, on you know obviously a web browser when you're if you're interested in the global. I think it's called global global po processing program or something like that. For sure, global and process are the first and last word, but I can't remember what that middle word is. Anyways, um, final thing and. I will definitely talk about this again next time when we're talking about listings. But final thing is something that I haven't personally implemented on my eBay yet, just because it doesn't work for my lifestyle. It doesn't work for my um, season of life right now with a baby, with sicknesses, with school, with going back and forth. Um, with working multiple jobs, it doesn't work for my season of life right now, but I have been getting a lot of prompts. Improve your listings, improve your account by changing your processing time from three days to one day. Um, so that means, which I think, it's not same day, it's 24 hours. So I think that's what it is. It's not same day processing, but you have 24 hours to process from the time of payment, not from the time of sale, from the time of payment. Sorry, my camera overheated. So let's get through this. It's pretty much telling me I'm tired and stop talking. Um, okay, so what was I saying? 
So pro my processing time right now is three days. So I have three days after um, payment, three business days. These are always business days um, from the time of payment to process the item. And that means um, printing, shipping label, getting it to the post office, having it scanned in, all of that. Um, so pretty much from the time of payment to the time of you um, uh, providing an active tracking number. That's how they um, determine processing time. So eBay definitely wants me to get from three days to one day, but I'm just not there yet. So right now it's three days. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. Oh, no, it's not. I wanted to, t to tell you guys about, so under consistency, what can you do if you are just absolutely not buying inventory again for whatever reason? There are ways for you to go back into your listings. You can add more specifics, item, item specifics. Just, add, just pick one and add it. Some people literally go into the title and just add a space at the end. If you have room, just add a space and then hit save. Now that listing is back at the top. Um, whatever you can do to go into a listing to edit it, to make it look like a new listing. And like I said, some, some resellers literally to make it look like a brand new listing, go in and put that space at the end. And now the algorithm sees this as a new listing that is different from a previous listing that's in the algorithm and it'll push you back up to the top. So you could definitely do that where you go back and just edit, um, older listings just to keep them current and keep them active up at the top of the list. So there is always a solution for you to keep your hands working in your um, inventory. I hope this video helps somebody out there. I hope this clarifies some things. Um, algorithm is very important. I encourage you to do your own research. Um, get on Google, read, get on eBay and, and read it from the horse's mouth or hear it from the horse's mouth um, directly from their um, facts page. So yeah, again, I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much on your support on my last video like this. I am encouraged to keep pushing out more informational videos like this for you. Um, stay tuned because I have a lot of shopping videos coming up for you guys. Until I see you in the next one, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.